Welcome everybody. We're going to go ahead and start fellowship. We're going to hear from Yahweh to start with, so we're going to go ahead and open up here. So, Yahweh, we thank you for the words that you give to us. We thank you for encouraging uh, every believer to uh, stand on faith, open their mouth, and speak the, the things, the glory, the promises, uh, just the words that you have that we are to utter them and be able to tap into these things. And so we thank you for the, the comfort, the exhortation. We thank you for all these things through your words, Yahweh. And we just speak this all through your son's name, Christ Jesus. So for anybody uh, who feels compelled, please go ahead and manifest. My children, you don't need to be the biggest, the strongest, or the fastest. I can give you everything you need uh, because I created you. If you use it justly, I can give you, give you anything. Fear not. Fear not. Don't be afraid. Don't allow fear to direct your path, but most of all, don't allow fear to direct your thoughts. Stay your mind upon my word and that which you've received. Stay your mind upon my word and on that which I promised you, and you will live a more abundant life. Speaking tongues of Turpet, Bukuliana, Eata, Satamayatu, Kupiti, Eliana, Eatu, Koyata, Beata, Sataki, Eliana, Beke, Utumaki, and Eata. As you begin each day and each moment of your life, consider who I am and I abide within you. I am the Creator, Yahweh, Elohim of hosts, who have put you in positions of power and authority to exercise that power and authority that you may deliver those in captivity. So you must speak and you must act to deliver people from the power of darkness. Be bold and know that the direction that you're asking me for will be given after you walk out in faith. You want directions, but I want obedience and I want faith. The path to your own has been paved. Walk forth as you're supposed to walk forth as it may seem easy, but don't look back because it might be too easy. Keep walking forth. Walking strong. Yeah. <clears throat> Position yourself before me and humble yourself that I may be able to speak to you, that you will hear me, uh, you will hear my callings, uh, and that you will know the words that I am putting upon you and the directions that I am squeezing you towards. Do not, do not rebel against these things, but welcome my encouraging, welcoming the bidding of my call. Do not hesitate to ask me for things, for all is given you. You are given dominion over all the things which I have made, which I have created and crafted with my hands. So do not hesitate to ask me for things. If there is something I can do for you and something you can do for me, then I will reward you with whatever you are asking. We thank you, Yahweh, for these words and for this evening and for uh, just the message that you have for us and for uh, blessing all the believers. And we just say this through your son's name, Christ Jesus. Okay. Get a drink here. She's a hot dog. She's loud. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started here. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys know who Mark Spitz is. The adults do, probably. He was the Phelps of my day. So Phelps was the guy who did all the world records in swimming. Mark Spitz broke, set, he got seven gold medals, and every single one of them he broke the world record. Wow. He was incredible. He was absolutely incredible. But anyway, I like this. If you fail to prepare, you're prepared to fail. So this is the little sharing on Send Me. And then there's a little question mark at the end, send me, okay? Because this is how it is a lot of times. You know, when people like, uh, you think about that in the military, they taught us don't volunteer for anything. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, that kind of rolled down. I'm like going pretty good, you know? Who's, who's a volunteer? You just kind of look, oh, look at my shoes there. They got something down there. <laughs> don't look at them, don't make eye contact. You know, same way when you're trying to get in between cars, you get the eye contact, <laughs> they gotta let you in. So same thing, but this is where we are for us, where we should be, send me, send me. And every single day, and Yahweh will do it. And I think to myself, yeah, it's good for me. I need to be doing more of this as well. Am I ready to be sent? And that's a big one. I, if you're being, if you're calling Yahweh, put me into battle. Uh, yeah, you're not quite ready for it. Yeah, we gotta work you up to that point. And so being ready, 
What is the holdup? Is it something I'm lacking? Am I fearful? Do I have enough faith? And who am I that I should be sent? That's a big one. A lot of times people say, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to these people. I've got no education. They're going to look at me like, who is this guy? And that's perfect. You always, you're the perfect candidate. You are the one to go. So don't back out. That's the big thing is when we're doing this, we're going to commit. Commit to, hey, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, you tell me what you want. I'll do it. And I'm not going to back out. So even if it's, oh, geez. Wait a minute, can we, can we do something else first? But this is it, that we're not backing out, that we're going to be called. So let's, let's start off here in Mark 10. Somebody call out pages. I didn't put pages on any of these, so. 45? Thank you. 46? Okay, Mark 10. Um, 45 through 52. And if somebody will read that for me, please. I will. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministering unto, but to minister and to give his life, a ransom instead of a ma instead of many. And they came unto Jericho, and it came, and he was journeying forth from Jericho and his disciples, and a considerable multitude, the son of Timaeus, blind Bartimaeus, a beggar, was sitting beside the road. And hearing that it was Yehoshua the Nazarene, he began to be crying aloud and saying, O oh, son of David, Yehoshua, have mercy upon me. And many were rebuking him, that he might hold his peace. But he, so much more, was crying aloud, O oh, son of David, have mercy on me. And coming to stand, Yehoshua said, Call him. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Take courage, rise, he calleth thee. And he, throwing off his mantle, sprang to his feet, came unto Yehoshua, and answering him, Yehoshua said, What desirest thou I should do for thee? And the blind man said unto him, Rabboni, that I may recover sight. And Yehoshua said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has saved thee. And straightway he recovered sight, and was following him in the road. That's it. And I think about that all the time, of even me growing up in church, that everything was so, so formal. You had to get permission to play a horned instrument in church. Flutes were okay, trombones never, Trump trumpets, and they have to see it. And I, I kind of, that always stuck with me because there was no clapping, no praise, no hallelujah, no amen, you know, any of that. And I think about that here with this guy had, they're trying to shush him. Shush, shush, here comes, here comes the Christ. Okay, and you're making racket. And what does that do? <laughs> He's like, I'm getting my blessing. And so he, more noise, yeah. and that's what did it. Had he silenced himself, he would have missed it. He would have missed it. And so even with this, it's the same thing when you see the apostles with us. That if somebody's calling out and we're like going, but I'm late for my appointment. I've got this to do. I'm, you know, ah, oh, geez. And it might be a second to check in. Wait a second. I'm missing something. Is there something to this? All right. No, everything's good. I'm going to go back to it. Or, yeah, there is something. And everything else, we'll push that back. It'll be good. Yahweh will take care of it. If you're being called, he's going to make everything else come through fine. So this is, a, this is a neat quote here from a runner. I don't know who this is because I am no runner, but make sure your worst enemy doesn't live between your own two ears. And I always thought about that because when I did run when I was in the military, not by choice, but that first half mile sucked. It was terrible. And you're just like, oh, why am I doing this? And I was a smoker back then and I liked smoking. I'm like, going, I gotta quit one or the other. And this I like, the running I don't like. And the, your mind would start telling you, you're not going to make it, you can't do it. All these things come in. And so I love that. Don't let that <coughs> enemy be between the ears because the adversary is going to work with you in as well. He's going to put the thoughts in your head about you can't do this, you're going to kill yourself. What are you doing? What are you thinking? you got to stop. And it's your own flesh that you're fighting against. The adversary will remind you of your sins in attempt to defeat you before you begin and along your walk. And this is where we're going to fight against this thing, saying that if we're being sent, how many times do people like going, I'm not ready to be sent. I'm not ready. I still have a long way to go. Well, you come back to them five years later. Are you ready now? No. How much farther have you come in the five years? Not much. Or gone downhill a little bit from that. And so this is where we're like pushing towards that to be ready. Sin, a hurdle in the race. Flip over to 1 John. And again, I don't have any of the pages marked, so. We can find. 1 John, 
248. Let's say first John one six through ten. Okay. So page two forty five. Okay, verses 6 through 10 of 1 John. If we say we have fellowship with him, and in darkness we are walking, we are dealing falsely and not doing the truth. Whereas, if in the light we are walking, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. If the blood of Yehoshua, his son, is cleansing us from our sins. If we say sin, we have none, we are deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we are confessing our sins, faithful is he and righteous, that he should forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, false are we, are we making him and his word is not in us. So this is, this is the fine line where you're looking at that. If a person's, if the adversary convinces you're a sinner, you're not going to be able to do this. Why would he send you? You're never going to go. And yet here it says this. That everybody has sin, but yet if you're walking in light and righteous, he's faithful to forgive you, and you are good. You are ready to go. But the adversary will use that against you. Yeah, no, you're not. Look at you. Do you remember this? Let's bring up some of the, pull the scroll back, and let's look what you have done in the last few years, and see. Let's remind you of all these things, and then you, oh, you shy down, blend back in. I'm not going to stand out, and I'm not going to be called. I'm not setting myself up to be called. Called to follow in the steps of Christ. So flip over to 1 Peter, which we are just a couple pages away, page 240, I believe. Maybe it's 220, 239. Uh, 20 through 25, it's going to be on page 240. And if somebody would read that for me, please, 20 through 25. <clears throat> for what sort of honor is it if committing sin and being buffeted ye endure it? But if doing good and suffering you endure it, this is the this is thankworthy with Elohim. Yeah, and hold for a second here. So what he's saying is, if you're getting beat up and you're in sin, yeah, what's the big deal? You're not. That's for. Yeah, you get, I mean, you, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. If that's what you're into, then you're expected. But then he says, go ahead. For hereunto have you been called, because Christ also suffered in your behalf, unto you leaving a pattern that you might follow his in his steps, who did not. A sin commit, neither was deceit found in his mouth. Who being reviled was not reviling again. Suffering he was not threatening, but making surrender unto him that judgeth right, righteously. Who on our sins himself bear up in his body unto the tree, in order that we from our sins getting away in righteousness might live. By, the, by whose stripes ye have been healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but have not turned back unto the shepherd and the overseer of your souls. And that's it. So a couple things on there. So if you're getting beat up, if you suffered because of righteousness, then honorable it is. And again, with that, the by whose stripes ye have been healed, not can be healed, you have been healed, it's done. And so again, with this, when sin, one of the biggest things that I think that I see within being called out to send me attitude is people with the sin in their life. Ah, don't call me, I can't, I'm not ready. This is, and it locks you up. And it's, yeah, perfect just completely hog ties you you're going to be ineffective and you just stay that way and the whole thing with the sin is to be dealt with it's to be dealt with that we walk in the light but we deal with the sin and that keeps us where we can be doing what's correct and Yahweh absolutely will send us absolutely okay Yahweh searches for those who will stand in the gap so out of Ezekiel because I've got a few scriptures on here I'm, we're not going to look them all up then sought I from among you a man who could build up a wall and stand in the breach or stand in the gap before me in behalf of the land, so that I may not destroy her, but I found none. So Yahweh's looking for people, constantly looking for people. Is there any shortages of tasks to do? No, not at all. There's shortage of those who will stand up to get into the gap. And that's what the shortage is. Yahweh doesn't want your capability, he wants your availability. And if you give him the availability, he will give you the capability. And he doesn't want you to be capable of doing it. He wants us to be, hey, glory is mine. It's not yours, but you're going to be the one who's going to be the mouthpiece. You're going to be the hands and feet that delivers this. So in 2 Chronicles 16, 19, I use the King James Version because the Rotherham, it kind of looks a little bit awkward and you have to really dissect it. 
For the eyes of the Lord, or the eyes of Yahweh, run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. He is looking for it. He's looking for the people. And even if a person says, I'm not ready, tell me what I need. God's like, hey, I'll take any volunteer. You give me a volunteer, I'll take it. I will use it. Being prepared to be sent. Okay? A few things here, a few tasks I put in here. Ask. Okay? Available, ready, and desiring. If I get up every morning, wait well, while I'm shaving, like, anything you need for today? Two, one, no, okay, I'm good. You know, <laughs> Yahweh's going to be like, well, yep, I, I see your heart. I see it. Nice try. We're not going to give you credit for that one there. Maybe a little partial credit. Come back again. But it's the whole thing where you're like going, send me, send me. I'm ready. Tell me what you want. I want to be working for you. I, my heart desires for you. Seek. Eyes open and searching for contact with the people around you. For me, it's I'm a I'm a pretty social person. This is not a tough thing for me because I will talk to people. I have no problem just BSing with people and talking to them. That's not a problem. But I think for Yahweh, for somebody who does not have that ability or is shy about talking, this is perfect. Hey, get in there, go to it because you're you're a perfect candidate. Realization. The big one here, the realization is this, that when you're going, you are representing not yourself, okay? You are showing Christ. You are showing what Yahweh desires for a person and what he's seeking for them. You know, you might make a contact with somebody, send me, I'm ready, send me. And all of a sudden, somebody's in your, in your path and Yahweh starts giving you words, okay? Great, as you start talking to the person, there's a healing they need. They need prayer. They need a prophecy. They need something, and here it is. You're like, okay, ready to go. And so the, it's not me. It's where, yep, I'm good at this. I can do this. I've got the power. I've got the authority. It's nope. I've got the attitude that Yahweh will make it happen. It'll all work. Risk. Walking out in faith, risking fear, rejection, or failure. And that is, that is one that does plague me, is that especially if you like send me and it's one person that's off by themselves in the grocery store. All right, let's go over there and get this over with. Okay, but what if it's in front of a group? Okay, what if it's in front of a group of people and you're going to go pick somebody out? Hey, you, Yahweh's calling you. Come again? Who's this you're talking about? But this is where it comes down to, where you're, all right, I'm going to lay it all on the line. You know, I'd like to have the whole script. Excuse me, let me pull my notes out, and we'll go through them. Check. Yep, hold them that. Check. Okay, but it's not that way. Yahweh's going to deliver as it comes, and it's going to be it's going to be a relationship with the person. You give a little bit, take a little bit, back and forth. It's almost like a dance. Okay, ask. We're going to break these apart a little bit. Daily request to be sent out. And so it's got to be, it's got to be part of our, I would say, morning ritual where you are putting on the right attitude. All right, up from bed, the armor comes on, I'm ready to go, I hear, a servant's ready, let's, what do you have? Put it on there. And even through there, send me, you may walk out, okay, I've, I've talked to Yahweh, send me, to put me in for something today, and yeah, okay, I'll be watching for it, and I'll be waiting for it, and be expecting it. Proactive. Send me. Change your perspective and awareness of the people you come in contact with along the way. And so as you're going about, there can be some things where Yahweh may, as you say, send me. And I think it was, what was that book that we read, Aaron? The, uh, you were born for this. Okay, he talked about this a lot. And I, I really like that. But it would, as he's looking over a group of people, Yahweh would like put a light or put something above somebody or on somebody that he would see and you're like going, that's peculiar, that must be the one. And sometimes it is, sometimes it's not, but it gives you a great start. And here's the worst thing, you come up, hey, I think I've got something for you from God. Because they may not, you say Yahweh, they might not, all right. And then you can explain, his name's Yahweh, blah, 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 who wants a relationship with you, and okay. And the person may tell you, eh, not really interested. Okay, well, have a good day, we'll see you later. No loss, no big deal, okay? Unless it's an Antifa person. Then you might get bear sprayed with their mostly peaceful bear spray. <laughs> Yahweh, send me today on a supernatural mission. I confirm to you I'll go where you send me. Now, that's a big one. Because what if, what if that is, okay, somewhere in this region, somewhere in this county, okay? That's my boundaries for today. Yeah. <laughs> but as we expand out, you know, I think about that when, when Christ was going across the water, to go free legion, okay? 
and people will be like going, what, do you, what, what exactly is it you're doing? This guy is a horrible dude. What are you thinking? And that's a, really? Have him come here then if he really wants this. You know? And all those things where you can try to rationalize it. Well, you know what, I kind of got plans for this afternoon. <laughs> and those are the things that come up and plague you. And so when you're doing it, if you're going to make the commitment, remember the word says if you make a commitment, make a commitment that you're willing to keep because it's better to keep your mouth quiet than to make a commitment and not follow through. And so as we're doing this, be prepared for that. If I say I'll do it, means you tell me I'll go and that opens up everything. Maybe sending you to a place that you really don't want to go. Maybe even a dangerous place. But if you're always calling you, then you're, you'll be okay. Seek. Sharing in Yahweh's heart for people. The attitude. Anyone, anytime, <clears throat> anywhere as Yahweh directs. And I put Apostle Paul on here because he would be a prime candidate. You know, if somebody told you, go speak to this guy. Tell him that, you know, that he's, he's doing wrong. Well, he's hunting Christians and killing Christians. I being one. Okay? I've got a big target on me. And so people would be like going, I don't want to talk to this guy. He's a horrible person. But what if it is the person? What if it is the time? And when we let our when we let our own senses get in, invade into it, it makes it tougher. Because if you see somebody, it's like a huge biker, somebody who's tatted all up. And you're like going, yeah, I really don't want to talk to this person. And they're like going, I was waiting. I was waiting. I, I've been, hey, you know what's funny? I've been praying to this God you talk about for a deliverer. And here you are. So that's what we have to do it anywhere, anytime, anyone. Be prompted to those around you, discernment for you to who engage with. And you have to be willing to surrender yourself, your agenda, for Yahweh. And the rewards are going to be great. By doing this, you're going to be greatly rewarded. And on top of that, as you walk out, Yahweh sees it. You're, you're going to get rewarded here, and you're going to get rewarded in the next time as well. And so it's something that's going to be wonderful for everything. Okay, next one. Realization. Knowing that it is via spirit that we have the power and authority to do the supernatural. We have been grafted in. That's why when we're talking about realizing who you are, that if we realize, okay, I don't have any superpowers, I don't have any of those things like that, but I don't need them because what I have is I have the promise and I have the authority. And if I believe that, if I read the word and I'm like going, it says it. I have it. It's calling me out to do these things. Well, for crying out loud, I can't be called out to do it if I can't do it. Yeah. So it's here. I'm ready to go. And so we've been purchased. We've been grafted in. We're inheritors. And by virtue of that, the authority's there. What was it that Christ couldn't do? Yeah. <laughs> Disobey his father. Yeah. That was it. That was the only thing he couldn't do. And he could have, but he didn't. He went. He was obedient and faithful under the cross. It's through faith that we become stronger in manifesting the Holy Spirit. Great way to do it. Practice, 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 practice. To be getting into it and slowly working into it. Start doing things. Endless supply of miracles are out there. There was no, sh no stop of it. The, the, what does the word say about the miracles that Christ performed? Wouldn't fit in the book? Yeah. Okay? Yeah, yeah that's it. And what are we talking about? One year? One year? Okay, so is there an endless supply of miracles that can be done? Absolutely. Christ said that we can do all that he did and more and more. And why? Because he's going to his father. But he's, here's my authority. In other words, here's the keys to the car. Here's the magic sword. Here's all the armor. Here's everything else. You put it on, guess who you are? You've got my word and I'm with you. Continue to reflect on times you're part of the supernatural. And this is a big one because this is, the, this is a boost to get you to realize who you are and what authority you warrant. So think about the personal accounts, okay? The family and friend encounters of the, the, the supernatural things that have taken place. And then the written accounts, there's tons of them. You go through here and you can find stuff, well, yeah, this is all you know thousands of years old. And then you look at it and you go to look at the book God's Generals. And you look through some of those, the miracles, the, the who was the guy who did the, the orphanage? Mueller. Bu yeah. Mueller. I always say Bueller. Mueller. Mm -hmm. uh, Mueller. And so I think of all those things, and these are daily, day in, day out, what's taking place. I heard of a mission trip that went to Haiti, and the people, it's a miracle for a lot of these people to have a meal at night. They, there's nothing there, and there's not going to be anything, and Yahweh has to provide for people, and, and does. And I'm like going, well, yeah. 40 years, I think he poured down manna upon them, okay? For crying out loud, is there, is there a shortage? Well, here's this food that's raining down from the, from the sky. 
It's happened once, but for 40 years. Okay? And then you get a double portion before the Sabbath. Wow, how clockwork. Hey, we can tell what day it is. And that's it. So there's no shortage of it. The shortage, again, is of the willing people. Yahweh and Christ need the hands and feet. So flip over to Romans. Romans 8. 811 is going to be on page 157. And will somebody read that for me? If moreover the Ruach of him that raised Yahushua from among the dead dwelleth in you, he that raised from among the dead Christ Yahushua shall make alive even your dead doomed bodies through means of this indwelling Ruach within you. That's it. And so that's a big one. Okay, This is the raising of Christ, which was the gyro. And so as you see this, it, this is, okay, who am I? I don't feel like I'm this person, but guess what? If somebody tells me I am, and that person has the authority, I'm like going, all right, right, let's. Yeah, I'll agree with that. So the last one, here's the risk. Be willing to act. And this is where we're not letting our senses impede into the tasks. Step out, exercise your faith, and bring about the supernatural. And that's what's going to be. When you say, uh, send me, what's going to happen is you're going to get little bits of information at a time. And as you act on those information, more information keeps coming and keeps coming. And then the pinnacle. And it might be just, hey, somebody needed to just have somebody talk to them for a few minutes. And that's all they needed. They may have been on the, the cusps of suicide. And somebody spent a couple minutes with them. And now they're like going... I was, that guy was really nice. That was really nice. You know, he, God bless you, love whatever. Maybe that's what it was that the person needed. But as we're walking, Yahweh will deliver the message. And this is out of Matthew 14. And making answer, Peter said unto him, Lord, if it is, if it is thou, bid, which is command or order me to come unto thee upon the waters. And he said, come. And descending from the boat, Peter walked upon the waters and came unto Yahushua. And that's it. Boy, that's a big one. And then <laughs> I always think about that. Call me little of faith? Are you kidding me? I'm the only one who got up. I called to you. But yeah, this is it. And guess what? That was, that was expressing himself farther. That was stretching the exercise towards Yahweh of doing what Yahweh's bidding us to be doing. Amen. When you bid, send me. Expect it to happen. If you're there and you're serious about it and you're watching for it and you're walking in light, it's going to happen. You will, it will take place. So this here was really neat. And I saw this the other day. I thought this was really cool. Jimmy Doolittle, you know he's Jimmy Doolittle was a Doolittle Raider. He did the first blind flight on September 24th of 1929 in a, whatever the heck that is, uh, consolidated, whatever, flew a set course and landed while under fabric hood and unable to see outside the airplane. He relayed in the entire. I'm sorry. He relied entirely on the directional gyro, artificial horizon, sensitive altimeter, and radio navigation. Wow. Back in those days, there was no such thing as instrument flying. There just wasn't. It was VFR, which is visual fly rules. Now you see this airplane. I watched this video. Actually, it was really cool because you can see on the outside how it looks like the two the two clamshells come up. They do, and they zip together. It's not. It's a vinyl. There no light comes through there. You can't see out. You can't see anything. Now, there was a guy in the front seat, okay? Because this is the first time they did this, and they didn't want to lose the pilot, A, and they didn't want to lose the airplane. But he was instructed not to do anything unless he had to take over because of something being dangerous. And so Jimmy Doolittle flew an entire mission, the whole flight, completely in the dark, just using his instruments. And his instruments were minimal. This is prehistoric. This is 1929, for crying out loud. Okay, so this was a long, long time ago, and he did it. Yeah, and I'm like no going, GPS back then. yeah, no GPS, no, I mean, they didn't have any color, radar, any of the other stuff. Just uh, the gyro basically just tells you when you're moving in one direction. It'll tell you a little bit. They were so, so. Explain to me what a gyro is. It, it's just something that spins really fast. And then what will happen is any movement that it has, cause, because it spins, it has its own force field within it. And then any movement moves it onto these little pads that pick that up and tell it which directions it's going. It tries to sense how fast you're going. They're really, really accurate now. Back in those days, they all it did is basically told you you were moving. And that was about it. 
Okay, so it was it was a big deal. And so again, this was him. All right, we can do this. We're going to prove that you you can fly just off instruments and very rudimentary instruments. And so Doolittle was one of the most decorated uh, uh, pilots. When it came time for the Doolittle raid, he absolutely did not have to do it. It was named after him because he did do it, not before he said he would do it. Okay, then it wouldn't have been the Doolittle raid. It would have been whoever else would have done it. But he was a very decorated guy. He was the military's top pilot. And yet, who's going to lead this? First aircraft off of the Hornet, the USS Hornet aircraft carrier, taking off with this. And no, it never been done before. Never they been didn't done. Think he was going to make it. Yeah, they didn't think he was going to make it. There, and they knew that they were going to be short on fuel, and that they were going to have to either ditch in the water or land in China. And China was occupied by Japan, okay, which was not a friendly force. And so, yet, who who will do this? Right here, I'll do it. I'll do it. And so, his whole attitude, his whole life was and this way. And he flew there to drop a bop. He bopped drums on Japan because Japan did not think they had this this. Uh, idea that they were untouchable, that nobody could touch them. And so when we dropped bombs on them, it was more, it wasn't so much of a successful campaign of a bombing raid as it was that we broke it and we did get through to you. And so, yeah, it was, it was very successful because it also dealt a blow of defeat to them and it lifted up the Americans for, we're, we're in this. Yeah. Okay, let's flip over here to Isaiah 6. Isaiah 6, 5 through 8, on page 653. And if somebody would read 5 through 8 for me, please. I will. It's one of my favorites. <clears throat> then said I, Woe to me, for I am undone, because a man of unclean lips am I. And in the midst of a people of unclean lips do I dwell. For the king of Yahweh of hosts have mine eyes seen. Then flew unto me one of the seraphim, and in his hand a live coal. With tongs had he taken from off the altar. Then touched he my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips. Thus shall, he be take, thus shall be taken away thine iniquity. And thy sins by propitiation be covered. Then heard I the voice of my Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. That's, that's excellent, and that's, that's awesome. And, and again, what's his dilemma? His unclean lips. And you know what I never have caught before? The it seraphim nice. held the coal in his hands, but he used tongs to take it off of the altar. Huh. And I'm like going, I never noticed that before. Hmm. And I'm like going, so maybe that was a sacred thing that he couldn't reach into the altar. I don't know, but I always thought that if you're holding it with your hand, I mean, you certainly could just grab it out of there, but he used tongs to pull it off. I'm like, well, that's interesting. That's really neat. But the whole thing was, this was the propitiation covering for him to be cleansed. What's ours? Okay, we've got it too, through Christ. That's our propitiatory covering that did this for us, that did the cleansing, the cleansing for us. So we have it, and we have it to even a more higher degree. And, and for us, that's where we should be. Here I am. Send me. <clears throat> Thessalonians. Flip over to Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians 5. Going to be on page uh, 211. Yeah, thank you. And if somebody would read 8 through 24. Sorry, that's a long one, so... An adult, maybe, or somebody who wants to read it, that's a bunch. But we, being of the day, let us be sober, putting on a breastplate of faith, a mind, and love, and for helmet, the hope of salvation. Because Yahweh did not appoint us unto anger, but unto acquiring salvation through our Lord Yahushua Mashiach, who died for us in order that whether we be watching or sleeping, Together with him, we should live. Wherefore, be consoling one another and building up each the other, even as ye are also doing. Now we request you, brethren, to know them who are toiling among you and presiding over you in the Lord and admonishing you and to hold them in very high esteem in love, their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves, but we exhort you, brethren, admonish the disorderly. Soothe them of little 
Help the weak, be long suffering towards all. See that none, evil for evil, in any way do render, but evermore what is good be pursuing towards one another and towards all. Evermore rejoice, unceasingly pray, and everything give thanks, for this is a thing willed of Yahweh in Christ Yahushua towards you. The spirit do not quench, prophesying do not despise, but all things put to the proof. What is comely, hold ye fast. From every form of wickedness abstain, but the God of peace himself hallow you completely and entire my, your spirit and soul and body. That's to be unblameable in the presence of the Lord Yahushua Mashiach, be preserved. Faithful is he that is calling you who also will perform. Thank you. That's it. And that's it. And so that's again, faithful is he that is calling you who also will perform. You get called, you just got it. And so that's even something more that I think about that with uh, Abraham and Isaac. You know, when he gets told that he, to go sacrifice him, Abraham had to, had to have thought, this is going to be unusual because something's going to be, something's very unique here. But I'm going to obey and I'm going to do what you tell me. And that what's to perform, he knows what the promise is. And so, all right, I'll go through it. I'm not sure why, but I'll be obedient. And yeah, perfect. And then Christ reads about that. And Christ gets to read that testimony and see from the time he's told to do it, it was three days. Okay, and so he's starting to put these together that this was something maybe for Christ as well, for him to be able to study and to learn and to go through. And so I go, yeah, great. And you, um, the guy blessed. So yeah, father of many nations. Also here, this is where we're looking at. This is the whole crux of this. Faithful he that is calling you, who will also perform. And in Jeremiah 1.12, Then said Yahweh unto me, Thou hast rightly seen, for keeping watch am I, am I over my word to perform it. To perform it. So he's, he's keeping watch to make sure that his word is done, is performed. So Yahweh calls, you're good. You're good. All right. Might be a scary thing. Yeah, I'm calling you to do this. All right. We're good. I know. I know the outcome. I know the outcome. I, I remember it was uh, one of the CES guys. I think it was John Lennon was talking about playing chess with Bobby Fischer, and he goes, he doesn't know what moves are going to be there, but he's going to win. Okay, he's going to win. It's all. It doesn't matter the play that you go through, but at the end of the game, Bobby Fischer wins. He's going to win the chess game. And so as you're looking at that, yeah, this is the same thing. Yahweh's going to do it, and he's going to send you. Well, I, I'm going to need the money. I'm going to need all this stuff set up. Now he goes, one at a time, we'll take care of all this. All the things will take place. And in Joshua 23, 14, But lo, I am going today in the way of all the earth. You must acknowledge, therefore, with all your heart and with all your soul, that there hath not failed a single thing out of all the good things which Yahweh, your Elohim, spake concerning you. The whole hath come to pass to you. There hath not failed thereof a single thing. Amen. That's it. Okay. That's it. That's the end of the, sh the sharing here for tonight. <clears throat> okay. And I'll go ahead and close with a prayer and a, a word. Thank you, Yahweh, for the, this evening. We thank you for this changing of the season. Thank you for blessing over our country. And for uh, we intercede for those righteous uh, men and women in positions of authority, uh, that they may have increase, that they may have uh, your wisdom and your direction, and that they may have, that they may have uh, uh, men of you around them to, to give them guidance and great guidance, that they may be seeking out your words and to be pleasing unto you, Yahweh, and for uh, the forgiveness of the sins of this nation, that we, uh, the, the, there are many who, who do bow down and love you and praise you and uh, the love for that they have for you, that we do not want to have things to, destroyed or stolen away by the adversary. So we thank you for that, Yahweh. We thank you for blessing them and encouraging them. We thank you for uh, our daily walk that we have with you and with your son. And we just thank you for you calling upon us and uh, us positioning ourselves that, that we are ready to go, that we are in the game, and that as you call us, that we will stand up and that we will deliver. And we thank you for that, for your words that you give to us, that we're able to speak these and uh, to just have that authority and your spirit upon us. And we just speak this in your son's name, Christ Jesus. See, see the light that I have put above you, uh, for I have... I have named every star. 
of, of these things that your worth to me is beyond any of these stars beyond the things that, that are created, for I have created you for the relationship with me that I may be able to deliver to you as a father that loves you and to be able to uh, see your pains and your burdens and to be able to have joy with you and celebration with you. So come before me and know that as you do these things that I am watchful of all these things for I see where your heart is and I see the desires that you are stepping out for me and I encourage you to continue and, and to come before me and ask for many things that you are seeking you have not because you have not asked. Amen. Amen. All right.